So I asked the question yesterday, why is Hertz dropping all these Teslas? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Tom gave the most logical, reasonable answer. I'm like, okay, that makes sense to me on why they would do that. Hertz is selling. No, I'm sorry, Tom didn't give that. Rob gave that yesterday when we were um, Good job, Rob. in podcast prep. Hertz is selling 20,000 EVs so it can buy more gas guzzlers, oh. The Verge. Look at the title of it. The title is doing what? It's trashing Hertz. Meaning, no matter what Hertz does, they're not winning. Yes. They're selling 20,000 EVs so it can buy more gas guzzlers. But is Hertz making the right decision? If you read the full story and logic behind it, it sounds like they are. So 20,000 cars, approximately one-third of its global EV fleet is what they're selling, and use the proceeds to purchase gas-powered vehicles after facing unexpected de uh, depreciation and damage costs amounting to $245 million for its EVs. The decision aims to better balance supply against expected demand of EVs as the company couldn't find enough customers for its EVs despite previously setting a 25% EV fleet target for 2024. Again, I love this one. They say, by 2035, there will be no gas guzzling cars in the state of California. And then common sense hits, results hits, and you realize it's not an effective method, Newsom, but it's a good campaign message for you to give. Yep. Hertz shift. From scaling up to EV ambition to selling off its EV reflects the challenges faced by the company and the broader industry as softening demand and EV ownership challenges such as charging and upkeep impact plans for EV adoption. While EV sales continue to grow, the rate of growth has slowed, prompting companies to reassess their EV investment. Rob, you have a... Uh, uh, t uh, Tesla yourself, right? And you're a Tesla owner. So what 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 logic do you see with the store here yourself? Well, first of all, whenever there's, from my experience, anytime there's an issue with your Tesla, the only person that can fix it, if there's any type of mechanical issue, is a Tesla representative. Or um, Elon Musk. Yes. Um, like when I needed to get my tires rotated, I didn't take it to a shop. They came to me. They sent a Tesla technician to my house and switched out the, uh, the tires from the front to the back. Um, and then the other thing is charging with these vehicles. It's if you're not, if you don't have hands-on experience with the vehicles, it's very hard to understand how the charging works. Um, when you go faster, you eat more of the battery away, so you have to pre-plan some of that stuff. You'll get in the car and you'll put in your destination. It'll tell you how much battery you have, how many miles to get there. But if you go 75 or above, it dwindles, and it, so a lot of people will run out of power not knowing that they're not going to get to a charger in time. And it's not like there's charging stations every couple of blocks. You're talking about 40, 50, 60 miles in between charging stations. So if you run low on battery, the only way that you can get to a charging station if the battery runs out is they send a tow truck out to get you. They put your car on the tow truck, and then they drive that to the charging station And that thing runs you. on gas. <laughs> yes. Let, let, let me ask Rob a question because I'm not trying to put your business out there, but you've had some issues with your Teslas. Let's just say that. I yeah, I totally yeah. Not. Okay, okay. And just, Malik's crashed. You've been in some it, right? accidents. Malik, you've had some stuff. But yet you continue to return back to Tesla, and you bought another Tesla. Safest why? vehicle I've ever owned. That's why. So what's the reason? It's a, I would have died if I was in any other type of car uh, in the collision that I was in. I spun out. Somebody rear-ended me. I spun out on the highway, hit a guardrail going seventy-five miles an hour, totaled the car, walked away completely unharmed. No, yeah, not unarmed. a concussion. Nothing. No, unharmed. No, un, what did I unharmed, say? Unarmed. unarmed but yes. you are armed. I, oh, yes. uh, I, I was unharmed yes. in the accident, so that's why I went back. They're great vehicles uh, economically. It doesn't yeah. cost me anything to charge this thing up, and it's a very safe vehicle for me and my kids. Gotcha. So, Tom, so safety. Thoughts on this with, with Hertz. What do you have with this? By the way, great commentary, Rob. Tom, what are your thoughts Love on you, Rob. This? Well, I, I'd line up. Hertz had the number one problem they had was the customers weren't taking it, so they couldn't find enough customers to rent the EV. So it started there, but then it went to all the things that you talked about, what Rob talked about, which is, you know, if you don't drive an EV a lot, you don't know how to charge it and you don't know how to set it. And a lot of times these EVs were getting run out of gas and getting stalled someplace because people that didn't understand it were running them out of gas. So there was a cost. So there was a bunch of cost underlying hurts in this and the fact that the uh, audience, the people that were renting from here didn't want it. And The Verge likes to say, buy more gas guzzlers. No, they're not. They're buying a bunch of cars that are four-cylinder engines. Some of them are even hybrids. And that's what they're buying for the fleet. So it's not like they're buying a bunch of you know, BMW M5s to get 11 miles a gallon here. That's not what's going on. So The Verge, you know, congratulations for spinning the headline. But 
Oh, I'm sorry. I just noticed it's The Verge. Um, <laughs> and so what Hertz has done is the practical thing. They said, hey, we got to go back to fuel-efficient cars. That everybody wants to rent so that they don't get stranded. And then the other thing is, is what he was pointing out is EVs do not have an infrastructure for repair. So Hertz is making the right decision. I have the same thing. I have a Fisker that's in my tiny little fleet of BizDoc cars. And, you know, I... You know, there's things that only Fisker can work on if it ever comes to that. And I and I know that. And that's a, a risk I take, something I accept, you know, by supporting that company with their car right now and supporting EVs up to a point because I think a, a blend is good. But Hertz, everybody's jumping on Hertz here, but Hertz is just doing the, the normal thing. I can't get enough people to rent these things, and I got increased cost of the ones that I have. And so I'm going to so I'm gonna sell them. And that's that. And by the way, Hertz is also suffering – because Hertz has been impacted by Uber, and Turo is actually mentioned in a quarterly earnings report. Um, I believe it was Enterprise. They mentioned Turo, which you can rent a car from somebody else a day. It, Turo is basically the um, Airbnb for cars. Turo is like the churros they sell at Magic Mountain. Exactly that's what like that the is. Cousin of it's that. a Mexican yes. dessert. No, but the point is, churros. Hertz and Avis and all the car rental companies have been hit by Uber and Turo. Tom, you want a Hertz donut? So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.